Thank you all for coming. My name's Ryan. It is great to be back. It's been a couple years since I've had a chance to do the panel in person, uh, but I'm really excited to share some new product with you and kind of review some stuff that's, that's starting to come out. Um, so we'll get right into it. So the first, uh, first company we're going to look at is Banana Force. They put out uh, non-transforming kind of high-end um, action figures uh, of, uh, of uh, basically Optimus Prime. That's the, the first thing they're going after. <laughs> so they just released their uh, Orion Predator, which was their kind of G1 styled Optimus. And they're doing an add-on kit for that. It's going to make them into a god Jinrai. Um, I think it looks really sharp. Um, they like to have different effects, like light up eyes and light up wings. and So I think there's going to be a lot of stuff to that. Um, I heard they're going to start using magnets to, to turn the, the parts on. I think the Orion Predator already does that. But it'll look sharp once it's out. Uh, the release window is the next couple of months. Um, you know, a third party release window, when they say next couple of months, that could mean a year. It might mean next week. I don't know. Now, the next one up is Half the Battle Toys. Now, if you haven't heard of Half the Battle Toys, they're actually here in the dealer room. Uh, they're set up, uh, and they have their own prototypes on display. Uh, is Mike here right now? I know he's trying to get here, uh, but if Mike's here, I'd ask him to come up, and he could talk about his own product. Uh, but if not, I'll gladly get the ball rolling. So he's doing uh, some G.I. Joe Transformers crossover style figures. And... Uh, so he's going to be doing his tank, and I think this arguably looks way better than what we've got coming already. <laughs> I mean, that took zero effort. Uh, but I think it looks sharp. That's obviously Livio's uh, art. And there's his hound. He's doing a, a vamp version of hound. Oh, there he is. Come on up, brother. Come talk about your, uh, your hard work and efforts. <laughs> this is Mike, everyone. Give him a big round of applause. Here you go, man. Take the stage. How's everybody doing? Awesome. All right, what do you want to know? <laughs> Tell them everything, man. Where's okay. Prime coming out? <laughs> so uh, we are working on a, uh, how do I say this? Um, transformable uh, military vehicles. Is that how I can say it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. All right. So yeah, so this is a, uh, something somewhat representing uh, a character that you may know in the Transformers universe. Uh, and so the prototype's done. Uh, we're still working on fine tuning it uh, for transformation and everything else. Uh, everything that we're making will be masterpiece size, as you can see. Uh, and they will also come with two characters uh, representing the franchise for that. And they're all going to be micro sized, uh, two, two and a quarter inch figures, fully posable. All right, so um, I don't know if you guys have been to the booth yet, but uh, these little um, canisters that look like they came out of a gumball, uh, there's Transformers in there. There they are. So this is a new micro line that we started. Uh, we broke a world record with um, Bumblebee. It's uh, 11 millimeters tall and has over almost 20 points of articulation. Uh, Megatron. 39 millimeters tall and like close to 30 points of articulation for these guys. So, and this is all of them. So yeah, we're working on the entire art crew right now um, and the Nemesis crew. Uh, right now, currently we have uh, pre-orders for the entire art crew on our Etsy page. And I don't know if I have a link on here for Etsy, but uh, I have a QR code. That one's bright. Yeah. <laughs> so. Does it go in the dark? It it could. This this is a possibility because I um, I broke a record with this and then also I I developed my own resins for 3D printing all of this uh, and I also have developed a 3D printable glow in the dark resin as well. So we'll see if we can get it to work with these and I will probably show that one up on my um, Facebook page if you guys follow that. Um, we go. <laughs> right? Isn't that friggin' adorable? Yes, it is. Nine millimeters. Not articulated yet. But let's see. There's still hope. <laughs> 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 
I like when the names are seeing red and seeing or feeling. Blue. Wait, which one? <laughs> you mean frenzy rumble, right? <laughs> frumble, frumble, yeah. How long does it take to uh, to print something like this? I know it's all three D printed. Like, how long um, does it take you to develop that process? Well, it's taken me years to develop the process. <laughs> Uh, but uh, as far as how they are printed, um, once I get the file set up, these run about 50 minutes per print. Uh, and a full tray, I can get uh, close to 30 figures in a print. That's pretty cool. So this is, this is the future of manufacturing right here, 3D printing. Because um, especially with Bumblebee, to get the details that I get out of it, it cannot be done through injection molding. It's near impossible. So we're focusing on uh, getting everything done through 3D printing. So you'll see them in uh, live form here once we get through these 100 pictures. <laughs> there we go. And you can also see these in the dealer room. He's got his own setup right now with the prototypes on display. Yeah, so if you guys want to check these out, uh, they're uh, at the booth. Um, so they have them on display. Most of these are still in prototype form. Uh, as you can see, uh, Reflectors had a bad day. <laughs> yeah, uh, but. We got one together, and as I was printing all of these, like literally five minutes before I drove over here from Arizona, um, I realized that I was missing like thighs from one guy and <laughs> feet from another guy. And I'm like, all right, well, I guess it is what it is. That's the details. Like you can't even see it in the pictures. I, I can't get close enough with a camera to show the detail inside the faces, but they're there. They smile. Yeah. So uh, if you go into my Etsy shop, I have some other pictures that you can see uh, a fully painted bumblebee that I did. Um, hopefully you guys can paint them on your own. Cause I, <laughs> <laughs> I have crippling arthritis trying to paint all those. Yeah, I have no time for that. <laughs> and I need at least 20 pairs of glasses in front of me to be able to do that. But all right, that's it. All right, well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank, you much. thank you very much, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks. That was very cool. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate that. I love legend scale stuff. I, if anyone knows me, I'll eat that stuff day and night. My poor wife, it's all over her house. Legends figure everywhere. They're not edible. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's impossible. We have another um, uh, kind of startup uh, third party company called Icon 3D Labs, and they're doing upgrade kits for Ninja Turtles. So it's a sewer layer set. I think this is pretty rad. No, I don't collect. Uh, TMNT stuff, but I know a lot of people here do, and I love that we can show this and share this with people. So they're going to do basically the, the, the chilling pad in the sewers. You'll have a couple of different options for couches and TVs, and all assembles pretty well. Like, I love the details. Like, it's, it's sitting on a pile of books like it did in the show. Like, that stuff's so cool. So it'll look good for your TMNT collection. Now, I don't know what scale uh, figures it uses. Whatever that is. <laughs> but I think that looks pretty rad. They're doing an upgrade kit for Grimlock. I think we had to show, uh, or we, we had the chance to show a little bit of this last show. Um, so they're going to do sword upgrades for Grimlock in different colors, different hilts. He's got uh, Sharktacon shoulder pads. I think that looks pretty rad. I like the, the emerald green. I can see my wife clapping in the background. <laughs> we love Sharktagons. And uh, he comes with his crown. He comes with a throne. I like the details. I like that King Grimlock uh, crest almost in the chair. And I think that looks really rad. One thing he was missing, brutally missing, was a sword. And I think those shoulder pads look really cool. And they're doing um, a chest upgrade kit for Acoustic Wave, just to have a little raised Decepticon symbol that plugs right into the chest. Little disclaimer, the figure is not included with the chest piece. Iron Factory. Again, I love Legends figures. Uh, they've done a lot of cool stuff in the past. They've done DJD. Uh, they've done a lot of IDW characters. And they recently got into a, a Samurai series. It's been a little mixed reviews, but I think it's really starting to pick up. 
this sea spray is actually out in the display case, I think out of the chosen prime booth. And I think this is amazing. Like I don't want super G1 stuff all the time. Like I like G1, but I like that this is an artistic interpretation of it. It's, it's kind of a callback to what they did right. They, they took a character, sea spray's pretty bland. Like he's a cool character, but he's kind of bland. But they made him look really cool. Like his, I like the harpoon gun. I like the way he all, like the silhouette of him makes him look more heroic, I think. It's very opposable. All the Iron Factory figures recently come with different hands, an open hand grip, a closed hand grip, like a, a, an open palm. Like that's a really, really cool hovercraft mode for a little Legends figure. So I like that, uh, that kind of new attention to detail they're going for. And then throwbacks, like uh, this is Desert Rose. It's gonna be a, a limited run figure. It's gonna be about 1,500 pieces. Uh, and that's uh, obviously the unreleased G2 Sandstorm. Out of their ramjet, or who is that? Thrust, dirge? I can't remember which, uh, which mold it is. But it looks sharp. In their Samurai series, uh, they're going to be doing two versions of Drift. They're going to have the, the more Michael Bay movie, Blue, and uh, the IDW Red and White. A lot of detail in, uh, in these figures, and they're very poseable. But I like that they can clip the sword to the, to the side skirt, and they can hold on to it. I like that kind of patient look. And the sword mounts to the top. I like some good weapon storage. I am so excited for this lockdown. I think this looks incredibly cool. Um, he does have his hook hand. Uh, he's got that um, the, the samurai hat. I forget what it's called. I really should have looked it up before I started rambling on about it. Uh, but he comes with a nice sword, and the hook comes with a poseable chain. And the figure itself is incredibly poseable. Uh, it's going to be a little bit taller than the regular uh, Legend series stuff, because lockdown's supposed to be a taller, ganglier character. But I think that uh, that just looks so cool. And he's got a almost like a Japanese mobster boss kind of car, and I'm all for that. I think it looks, I love the headlights. Trade in our Ford Escape for one of those. <laughs> and then they're doing uh, the Datsuns. Um, I love CN Prowl, but I damn near shed a bit of a tear when I saw animated brawl up there <clears throat> because of Derek. So that was uh, a nice surprise to see. And then you can see Blue Streak and, and Smokescreen. They'll be coming as well. And this stuff is planned tentatively for 2022. Again, it might be December, it might be June next year. They're going to do a pretty big Grimlock in their Samurai series. Um, I love the, the monster, almost the, the demon-y dragon kind of look. There's that, uh, that other color of drift, and you can see a samurai version of uh, Ironhide and Ratchet. They have prototypes coming for uh, Brawn and Outback, not in the Samurai series. And you can see a picture of some of the prototypes there. They're doing uh, Magical Girl Seekers. <laughs> it just it, it sells itself, I guess. I do like the cat ears, though, on Thundercracker. And then I'm so bloody excited for this. Finally, an amazing looking Lyle Kaiser. Um, it will be six figures. Uh, they will have functioning uh, Breastmasters. And um, I don't know anything else. I don't know if the weapons combine. I don't know if he's going to come with his, his big spear. Um, but I imagine they would. They're pretty good about stuff like that. And I don't know if it's an all in one combiner. But I, I hear that's what they want to do. A little closer look there at the prototype or the, the render of um, Lyle Kaiser. Now, Bingo Toys. Bingo Toys is a newer company. They just released um, their version of uh, Bumblebee movie Shockwave. And they're going to be following that up with Steel Man, their version of uh, Bumblebee movie Ironhide. You can see a bunch of details um, on the front and on the back. You'll notice there's no big gaping holes in the thighs or in the forearms. But it looks really sharp. You'll see he'll be made from ABS, POM, and die cast. He's roughly 25 centimeters tall. Uh, he does transform into an armored car. He comes with one, in, one gun and a mystery accessory. 
I don't know what that is yet. That's just the information they gave me. Um, and he'll have like a weathered, worn out scheme to show that he's been through many battles. That's uh, next to their, their Optimus. Or sorry, their, their, uh, their Shockwave. And they're gonna be doing Windblade. Uh, she will turn into a plane and it's supposed to come out June 2022. We'll see. Now, Planet X. Planet X has been doing some amazing stuff. Um, their <laughs> caucus was doing an incredible job, and now we have Ares. You have to do the obligatory G2 repaint of Grimlock. <laughs> but I think it looks really sharp. I love the metallic blue. That's something that Planet X just didn't get when they first started. It was very flat color schemes, and now they're doing stuff like this, and that's, that sells it to me. I think that looks incredible together. It's a big, beefy lad. Um, the, the regular version I've seen out there for sale uh, in the showroom, and let me know how it is. I haven't seen it. I haven't held one in hand yet, but if, uh, if you can recommend it, let me know. And they have Victory Leo to go with their Star Saber from a year ago? Maybe a little bit more? But he's gonna have all the modes. He'll have his robot mode, the, the lion mode, his jet mode. Um, it will combine into the super jet as well as the super robot. Um, there is in his BFG mode. And you can see that um, the Star Saber core can actually mount onto it. There it is combined with the, the Star Saber jet and the combined mode. It's giving a big brave kind of feeling with that lion head chest. But it upgrades the sword. He's got the shoulder cannons and the BFG. So more, uh, more from that sometime later this year. Fans Hobby. Fans Hobby have been absolutely killing it. Whether it's you know, Headmasters or Armada, they're doing a lot of really cool stuff. The exclusive this weekend, uh, Arson, such a cool uh, G2 throwback. They're doing the, uh, the toy version of, of uh, what, what was theirs called? Um, Cap. Cap, yeah, Cap, thank you. So Flame Breaker is their toy version, the US toy version of that. For anyone who really wants the US versions of all three Headmasters, now you can get them. There's Arson, the, uh, the, the exclusive for the show this weekend. Beautiful paint scheme, I absolutely love the head. It, uh, it really came together well. And we can finally see Commander E in his full colored combined mode. And you'll notice that like the, the hands are finally articulated, like it's gonna have so much more room to, to pose fully combined. And there's Fat Boy in his, uh, sorry, the core robot in his single mode. Going on to fans toys. They have a lot of cool stuff coming and they recently released, but it wasn't them, Robot Paradise released Acoustic Wave and they're gonna have this guy to go with it. So Recorder is gonna be your typical masterpiece scale figure. You can see the die cast in the, in the window and in the hips. He'll have the Marvel head. That's a really good looking Marvel Comics head. It'll have all your standard articulation and imposability that you would expect from a Fans Toys release. And you can see his little cassette buddies down there in the rocks. And what a, you know, our, an estimate on what the colors will look like. They want to impress me, I want an MP3 player in that thing. <laughs> but it cuts a mean silhouette. And there's Steel Jaw. I think this is going to be its own separate set, just like Robot Paradise released the cassettes on their own. You can see Steel Jaw, lots of articulation, Ramhorn. I mean, I don't know if that's what they're, they're obviously not going to call them Steel Jaw and Ramhorn. We're just <laughs> semantics. But there's a lot of detail for a little cassette rhino. No. 
sometime this lifetime? Yes. Yeah. Don't, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they're coming eventually because there's already another G1 blaster that kind of is getting released soon. I'm sure this is getting fast-tracked to, to go along with that. Um, you can see their tapes look pretty sharp. And here we have a little teaser silhouette for another release that they're going to do alongside of it. So that'd be pretty dope. All right, Moon Studio. So Moon Studio um, has been just killing it with train bots. I don't think any of us expected train bots to be so cool looking, but they really are. They've done an amazing job recreating all of the more animation accurate models uh, while making them very sturdy and very solid in their alt modes. So you can see the team here all coming together. I think most of them are on sale out in the dealer room right now. But what I'm most excited for is to see the teams together. I love, I, I love combiners, but I don't usually combine my third party combiners. I like the teams just as they are. But these look fantastic when they're combined. It's a mean looking unit. and the trains connect. And then all those combine into this guy. Now, I think that looks super cool, but one of the, my favorite things about this is if you look at the back of the hands, he's got traffic lights, like train conducting lights, and I think that's the coolest damn Easter egg. <laughs> he's a very clean, black, uh, a very clean back. It doesn't look like it's going to fall over. You know, you, you see some combiners and if you breathe on it funny, it falls over and smashes. This looks like it could, it could take a hit. Nice detail to the face sculpt. And like, I like that you can see the, how well everything comes together. It doesn't look like that arm's going to fall off. It doesn't look like the upper torso is going to separate from the bottom half. So this set should be complete fairly soon. Now Kang Toys, Kang Toys started off doing um, a Transmetal 2 Megatron, and they teased uh, like a Razor Claw. No, uh, Tiger, Hawk. Tiger Hawk. Thank you. I was thinking of the universe one. Uh, they teased Tiger Hawk a while back. I still have no update for that, but they are doing their own uh, version of the G1 Predacons. But what they're doing is they're taking every part of the combiner and making it something. So the, the feet, the feet turn into wolves, and those wolves turn into little robots. Even the hands, the hands combine to form a little crab. I love that. I love the, it's a unique way to store kibble. Yeah, it does kind of look like a tank, doesn't it? And you can still see the two, like, what would have been foot cannons kind of posed into the transformation. But the wolves are pretty articulated. I think they have different faces. Yeah, they do have different faces. And that's uh, one of the feet with Razor Claw. I'm looking forward to see what that looks like fully colored. Because I mean, it, it, so much of the detail gets lost in the wash of silver that I don't know if it pops the way you'd want it to pop. But I like that big ax. I love the, the detail of the jaw and all the teeth in the mouth. And there's the team together. And you see down at the bottom is the hand crab. <laughs> and you'll notice there's maybe a little bit too many Predacons. That's because they made the, the, the hips uh, turn into a gorilla. So the whole team will look like that when it's done. And they're also doing a, a Legends version of it. Um, as well, and that, I don't have any extra pictures of that right now, but um, that, uh, I think they've released Firmament Mini, the smaller version of Dive Bomb already, and the next one should be coming soon. Now, Vectron Labs is a newer company. Um, they're a, a Chinese-Italian company, um, and they're very proud of their, their first upcoming release, uh, Ringo, uh, of the Excavators. Now, I know we've all got a dime or two of our own devastators. But this one does look promising. 
Uh, they, they do plan on having um, a prototype out soon. Uh, but they're a new company, so things take a little while to get off the floor. But this version of Scrapper looks pretty good. A lot of detail. And it's going to be a masterpiece um, scale figure. What I really like about this one is it's going to have options for not only a tune version, but a toy version as well. And you can see the tune wheels there, and then the toy wheels on that one. And you'll notice the scoop on the bucket. Um, it looks like it's almost layered. What they've done for this, and see, this is the G1 tune alt mode, and then your G1 restyled vintage alt mode. But what they're gonna have with this is this bucket transforms into three different versions of the foot, depending on how you want it. Um, there was a lot of kind of talk back and forth. Is it just an insert that comes in and out? And he said, no, this actually transforms between those three variations. No parts forming, no nothing. It's, it's all gonna work into that, into that bucket. And then their teaser after they're done with uh, Devastator is uh, Metatron. Alex Transbots also going into the Devastator world. So there's going to be a lot, of, a lot of different versions of this too. So this is Ground Bite, um, their version of Scrapper, obviously. A um, lot of detail in that. I love seeing the, all the, the working mechanics in that uh, rig system. And you, here's the youth version, their G1 toy version, the Euro edition, and the US edition. And here's the combined mode. And what you'll see here is it comes with a base to make the combined mode rock solid. So it'll all lick together. So, you know, if you bump the table, it doesn't take a dive. And they're going to retool him into Dig Pig. You see two different heads and two new target masters. I think that's a pretty cool retool. And he comes with puncture and track shot. Who's this Pokemon? <laughs> this is, <laughs> oh. so this is Pop Lights. And it's a little blurred out, it's still in development, uh, but we're getting third party throttle bots. And there's a little teaser for uh, some other members of the team. And then Conan, Detective Conan. <laughs> Glad some people got that. So this is uh, also in the pipeline. Their G2 trailer is coming in March. Um, their uh, Elgus uh, Premium is in, uh, in April, and hopefully uh, Springer in May. MMC. You can see their, um, the exclusive uh, out uh, on the floor right now. I think that's an Aegis 3 and up Toy Dojo exclusive. He is the knight. He is vengeance. That nice classic blue and yellow. It's a cool face sculpt. Lots of posability. Um, I know there, this, uh, the, the darker version was an exclusive last year. And there's Grifter, also another TFCon exclusive. Their version of Hubcap, pretty cool transformation. Dimensional Bridge. Um, a lot of people really liked uh, Iris Cultris. So I don't know if a lot of people know the story. Is It's the same character, but she goes around stealing alt modes, stealing other people's characters. Yes. So here she is, Iris Armadon. <laughs> and that's it, folks. Thank you very much for coming out. We really appreciate it. It was wonderful seeing you all. Thanks again.